But that's who I have to entertain. I have to try and find a way to have enough things that are in common in terms of lifestyle issues between people who are 12 and people who are 34 years old. Mm -hmm. Not easy, but lots of fun if you, if you can accomplish it. Right. Talk about dirty stuff a lot. Yeah. Everybody likes the dirty. Well, I mean, when when you're on the radio, can you just play anything you want? Or Absolutely you, not, you, no. you just have um, like a playlist, right? Here's the idea. Um, a lot of people think that the playlist is generated by somebody in some faraway town that because we're owned by a, by a company that owns 1,500 radio stations nationwide, mm -hmm. it's, it's a real easy misconception for people to think that, that the, the, the old guy in Texas who owns our, all of our radio stations takes uh, and, and decides for us what songs he's going to play. Well, that's just stupid mm -hmm. because the idea for anybody who owns anything is they want to make money with it. If, you're going to make, want, if you want to make money with it, the way you, that, you, that you do that is you need to be able to show potential advertisers mm -hmm who buy the airtime on your, you know, spend the money and, and, and keep things like FCTV alive. Um, uh, advertisers who spend money, you need to prove to them that you can generate ratings, that you can get ratings, that lots of people are going to listen to you. If you're playing, if you're playing some, if you're trying to attract people between the ages of 12 and 34 by playing the favorite songs of a 70-year-old man in Texas, it's not going to make anybody happy. Yeah, it's so it's very important that everybody in each local market, in each local station, in each local whatever it is that they're trying to achieve, that they have people in-house who n know what songs to pick. Brother, how you doing tonight? Good, man. What's going on? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. I was wondering if I can get on uh, something for You'll Start the Show. What do you need, man? I, I, you know what? This song has been in my head forever now. It's a Jimmy World song where all he says is, whoa oh. <laughs> You're talking about sweetness. That, that, that's exactly it, man. It's been in my head. I, I, I can't get it out. It's, it's on that self-titled slash Bleed American record. The reason why... Like back in the 50s, back in the 60s, way, way, way back in the day, yes, the disc jockeys had the power to play whatever songs they wanted to do, right. and the record companies just paid them. Here, have some money. Here's, here, here's some money. Here's some, uh, some, some whatever. <laughs> money, prostitutes, drugs, whatever it was, um, that they would get guys to play the songs for them. Okay. And that was a mess. I see. That was a mess. That, that wasn't serving the public. No. That wasn't serving what, what, what interests the people It was had. just their personal. So we've got people, we, we've got, we've got people who take... Many, many forms of research, plus uh, gut feelings and gut instincts on their own, and and yeah, they do pay attention to what songs are requested. That goes, that all goes, all goes into it. And, and I do, I do request features as well. Mm -hmm. Seven o'clock when I do, you start the show. That's a real, honest to God, no crap request. Um, eight o'clock pick of the litter. When I play back, whether you like the song or whether you don't like the song, that means something. That we don't, we don't throw that research away. Mm -hmm. That definitely means something. Um, Stupid little countdown show. Those are really the most requested songs. I compile the data and research every day. Ten o'clock bootleg that I play. That's a real honest to God no crap request. So yeah, they're in there, but roughly one tenth of one percent of an audience calls a radio station on any given day. Mm -hmm. Letting one tenth of one percent decide for everybody's about as dumb as letting a seventy year old guy in Texas pick the songs for twelve year olds in Pittsburgh. Well that that seems to make sense, yes. But uh, I think you've answered just about everything on my list. Um, is this the portion where we dance? Can we tango now? Uh, well, I don't know if we have the music or you, not. But I th you said Paul Schaefer was going to be here at some point. Uh, that no. was the only reason that I agreed to come today was that I was <laughs> going to get to hang out with Paul Schaefer because we were going to compare bald heads, want to oh. do some do some painting, and then we were going to have the tango. Well, I think Paul was tied up in New York with that whole Letterman show thing. Well, Letterman so. hit Stern today. I mean, I figure Paul could come over and hang out with us for a little uh, while. Well, it would be the cool thing to do. Okay, are we going to do a commercial? Yes? All right, we're going to go to a commercial right now, but we'll be right back with Grim from the X. Stick around. Well, I've taken the Jeep Challenge test drive. Me too. I love a challenge. I'm convinced the all-new 84 Jeep Cherokees and Wagoneers are America's best. Best with the industry's only choice of two four-wheel drive systems. Best with four doors and room for five. Blazer and Bronco 2 only seat four. Jeep has a new leaner and meaner go-anywhere four-cylinder engine. The best price, too. Cherokee starts at $99.95. See your local AMC Jeep or no dealer. Take the Jeep Challenge test drive and get this authentic Steeler coach's cap in the bargain. All right, and we're back uh, talking with Grim uh, from the X. Uh, I, I had a, a question for you here. Um, now, if anyone out there who's watching this program right now would think, you know, gee, I would like to do that when, when I, uh, after I graduate, C what advice w would you give them on how to get into the industry with, 
ra be it radio or radio or, or television like, right. or any kind of performance medium um, the, the important things to remember is that uh, and this was uh, one of my wife's professors in college had a really great analogy it was uh, it was a freshman it was a freshman media class you know how many of you have the idea that you want to be on television or radio when you get out of college how many people have the idea that these are the sorts of courses that you want to take to prepare you for that sort of life everybody's hand in the room went up and he said this the professor said this the odds of you cracking the lineup in major market television or radio are less than the odds of you cracking the lineup at a major league sports team think about it. NFL teams have 53 players uh, major League Baseball teams have 25. Uh, major League uh, Basque, uh, NBA basketball teams, what, they, they dress 12. Uh, NHL hockey, they dress, what, between 12 and 15 or something like that. Uh, there are three full-time disc jockeys on the X. There are, if you want to talk about some of the other radio stations uh, th th that work in the same building as me, you know, at DVE there's like five, including mornings, because we have Howard and our morning drive. Uh, the important thing to remember, it's a funnel, and very few people get to the very end of it. Um, which is one of the things that I was told constantly, and, and, and several times I was told constantly, oh, you're never going to get there, the odds are way, way, way too against you getting there. Um, if you really believe you have a talent and it's really what you want to do, and it's really more important to you than anything else that you've ever done, then nobody can tell you not to do it, but you also need to understand how hard the odds really are stacked against you when it comes to that sort of thing. Uh, that's something you absolutely need to know going in. Um, once you know that and you've still decided that this is something that I want to do, and first of all, that weeds out a lot of people, like weed before, like weed before the side right away. Um, however, once you've decided that that's what you really want to do and that's what you really want to stick with, you have to find a way to do it. You have to find a way to get your experience and get your time to make mistakes because the only way to really get good at anything like that is to do it and 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 do it. Nobody, not even people who have all the natural talent in the world, walk into a media setting right away and, and become great at it and become one of the best people who've ever done it. So that means you've got to find some time into college. I mean, unless you've got an uncle who's a TV producer or a, a cousin who's got something going on in, in radio or whatever medium it is you're trying to succeed, you've got to get into college so that you can get into a college radio station, a college television station, and make your mistakes. And whatever it is you want to do, you've got to learn how to do it and everything else. You want to be an anchor, learn how to run camera, learn how to, to edit digital video, learn how to floor direct, learn how to do everything. Because whatever it is that'll get you in the building, uh, where, wherever it is, uh, the television studio, radio studio, whatever it is, uh, you need to learn how to do as many things as possible to get you, uh, I hate, the, and the analogy, foot in the door is thrown at young people constantly and it doesn't mean anything to young people anymore because old people say foot in the door all the time and people think it's yeah. just some lame old person talking to me. Getting yourself in the building, your physical presence being there is so incredibly important and that's where an internship comes into play. If you were interning at a major market radio station, mm -hmm. if you're interning at a major market television station, you meet people. You can't get a job without knowing somebody. Oh. Um, you know, the, and, and, and people constantly throw phrases at young people like it's not what you know, it's who you know, and that gets old and lame and boring and tired and it doesn't mean anything when it's repeated 50,000 times, but it's true. You got to know somebody. And the only way to know somebody, if you don't know anybody from before, if you don't have an uncle in the business, is to get yourself in there as an intern. You work an excruciating number of hours for free with no guarantee that they're ever going to hire you, but if you are one of the talented people, and if you, if not, not only are you talented, but you, you're willing to do whatever it takes, uh, then you might catch some breaks. And many, many years down the road, you might actually be able to support yourself with a living doing it. Well, it's not easy. It's not easy. I lived in, I lived in the crackhead section of Charleroi. Can I say crackhead? Because I'm uh, not, I'm not glorifying the term. Yeah, I think we're allowed. To. I lived in the crackhead section of Charleroi in like a hundred fifty dollar a month apartment working for a little garbage radio station down there for a period of time. Oh. And, and this is after I had already done everything that I told you you need to do. It's a process. It's something that you need to really, really want. If you really, really don't want it, it's going to beat you up and you're going to be a very unhappy person. So it, it's, it's got to be, 
You have to make sure this is what I really want to do. Right. Or it's just.